We are live at Duluth High School in Gwinnett County, Georgia. It's the United Tyke Network Game of the Week. Welcome to the broadcast. I'm Noah Hirschman alongside Dorian Johnson, his twin brother Devin, making us sound and look good here. And uh, Dorian, we are we live at Duluth High School today. in Gwinnett County, Georgia. Yes, sir. So we're looking at a Georgia. top five matchup in, within the nation. So we have of the, the week. OG Ducks who are rated number four I'm in the nation. Noah They're Hirschman decked out in Dorian all yellow Johnson, with green trim. If you Devin recognize the Oregon Ducks uniforms, that's exactly what they look like. And then you have the OG. Yes, sir. So we're looking at a top five matchup. Number one team nation, so we eight have eight and under. OG out of Columbus, Ducks, Georgia, they are rocking the white nation. jerseys they're with the black out in uh, all yellow with green trim. If green you trim recognize well. the, the Oregon pink Ducks, yes, you know, love those that's pink exactly in honor of like. breast cancer awareness. And then you have yes, the OG, indeed. uh, the, uh, the, uh, and, uh, the Outlaws, the outlaws, the number one team in eight and under. Breast cancer awareness. We want you to know that we're thinking about you and we love you very much. Black sleeves and we hope with for the best green trim as well. And the pink socks. Been, yes, love and those pink socks. In honor of breast cancer. game here today. A perfect Sunday, October here in Gwinnett County. 64 degrees today. Humidity less than 40%. Yes. Winds out of the north northwest at six miles an hour. Uh, it was beautiful this morning driving in for me coming from downtown atlanta so uh can we say this is perfect fall weather yes i think so <laughs> i mean it's it, it just cooled down in the last couple of days here in mm -hmm. north georgia so uh starting to definitely feel like uh, fall after we had a fake fall a couple of weeks ago <laughs> had some warmer uh springtime weather and now it's starting to cool off again so uh looking like it's fall after we had a fake fall a couple of weeks ago <laughs> had some warmer uh, springtime weather and now it's starting to cool off again so uh, looking like it's going to be a great day uh, for football uh, look at these kids love these uniforms um, coaches out there getting ready for the ball game uh, it should be about a two hour uh, from uh, kickoff to the final gun here in Duluth and uh you know, it's pretty amazing. These kids, and they're eight and under, and they're playing on a regulation-sized football field. Yeah, that's not that's not the most impressive part. The most impressive part is probably these kids are they get they're they're living out a, a pretty much a dream. They're playing, uh, they're going across the country playing football against teams from across the country. So I think that's definitely that's that's an amazing experience, especially <laughs> as young as they are, eight 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 years old. I couldn't imagine doing that at that age. I, I imagine what the plane ride was like oh. uh, coming from. So the, uh, the OG Ducks, uh, FYI, they are from Corona, California, which is in Riverside County, so about 50 miles east of Los Angeles. So I imagine that it was a long plane ride from LAX to Hartsfield-Jackson uh, for this ball game, unless, of course, they, they took a bus. Not sure if, <laughs> how that would have worked out. But if it were me, I would have said, let's, let's get on the plane and let's get out to uh, Georgia. Um, so I'm pretty sure a lot of uh, iPads were, and a lot of uh, young programming was watched. Uh, Nickelodeon was watched or Cartoon Network. Yeah, hopefully they got to get on the planes where they have like the little TV screen in front of you. You can just yeah. sit there and just watch whatever you want to watch. Yeah, hopefully they have. I don't know if they have Nickelodeon on these uh, planes right now, but I know they've got uh, the the major networks and ESPN. Yeah. So maybe they were watching some NFL Network on their way over here. Yeah, speaking of NFL Network, I know you're a, a Dolphins fan. Uh, you want to talk about that game real quick? <laughs> <laughs> as much as I, 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 I wish you hadn't brought that up, but uh, we do have some NFL, you know, it is NFL Sunday here uh, in Georgia. The Which Falcons. does also be amazing for these kids as well. They're playing on the same day as uh, NFL players do. So Literally, they're kicking off about the same time as the NFL, a bunch of games uh, underway. But there was uh, breakfast football this <laughs> Sunday in uh, London. Uh Matchup of uh, I-95 rivals, Jacksonville Jaguars and the Miami Dolphins. The Jaguars coming from behind in the fourth quarter to defeat the Dolphins 23 to 23 to 20. They end a 20-game losing streak and a little reprieve for Urban Meyer after uh, some of the controversy he's been uh, swallowed up in in recent weeks. Uh, so a big win for Jacksonville as they get their first win. Urban Meyer getting his first win as an NFL head coach for the Dolphins, their fifth straight loss. Uh, Brian Flores and Chris Greer could be on the uh, hot seat mm -hmm. in Miami. We shall see. And they got a matchup with uh, 
the Atlanta Falcons next week back Ooh. in South Florida. So uh, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be an interesting uh, week in South Florida, and uh, probably not going to be a very lovely flight home <laughs> for the Aqua and Orange. Yeah. Well, it looks like coin toss is about to start here. Yep. As the uh, OG Ducks just came out into the field, the uh, yellow smoke. Yellow and green smoke. Yellow and green smoke. That's pretty yes. sick. Yeah, That's that was pretty, pretty cool. Uh, so it looks like we have the uh, coin toss here at midfield, and uh, we'll see what the result is of the coin toss. But uh, yeah, like I said, a beautiful day here. Not a cloud in the sky. Uh, Duluth, Georgia, uh, about 30 miles east of downtown Atlanta. So we're definitely out here in suburbia, on the, here on the countryside, and. Uh, not only that, we're in the middle of football country. Uh, yeah. That county is considered one of the premier. If you're in the southeast, you probably it's Miami-Dade and Gwinnett County, Georgia, the two premier uh, recruiting hotbeds for football in the uh, the country. So. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, yeah. A lot of a lot of great kids come out of Miami. Uh, you know, if you're a football NFL fan, Lamar Jackson, mm -hmm. who is a uh, a former MVP, went to high school in Miami, uh, was recruited by Louisville. And now has uh, had a solid start to his NFL career with the Baltimore Ravens. So it looks like the Twin City Outlaws won the toss. I believe they will receive to start the ball game here. And we have four quarters here, ten minutes each. So uh, this will be fast moving. So uh, hang on to your seats. Don't go anywhere if you uh, haven't gotten your drink yet. As uh, Dorian just cracks up in his V8 energy. Yeah, I, I got to stay. It's healthy energy. Good healthy, healthy energy. Yeah. Green tea. Green tea. I love it. So uh, V8, yeah. do you want to be a sponsor? <laughs> <laughs> Why not, man? We anything we can anything we can do to keep uh, bringing you these great games here on the UTN network. Uh, we appreciate that. So uh, waiting for the teams to get out here on the field, and we can have this kickoff and get things started. Speaking of starting, a uh, number of slew of games in the 1 o'clock window getting underway here uh, on the professional level. Uh, no score so far in Chicago between the Bears and Packers. The NFL's oldest rivalry renewed once again. I believe this is the 103rd matchup wow. in the history of that rivalry. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, that's a lot of games. Yeah, a lot of hatred. Actually, you know what? I, I stand corrected. 103rd, 203rd games. They've, wow. Yeah, they've played a lot of football games over the years. Uh, no scores so far in Indianapolis. That's a division uh, matchup between the Colts and the Texans. Rams and Giants underway uh, less than 11 minutes ago in the first quarter in the Meadowlands. No score there. Uh, we do have a score in Charlotte. Vikings getting a field goal. 25-yard uh, variety. They lead Carolina 3 nothing so far, 11.52 to go in the first quarter. The Ravens, uh, as uh, aforementioned, at home today, 4-1, and one, facing a fellow 4-1 and one foe in the AFC, the Los Angeles Chargers. Scoreless, a little over three minutes into that one at M&T Bank Stadium. And in the nation's capital, the Kansas City Chiefs, Looking to right the ship uh, after a not-so-good performance last Sunday night at home against Buffalo at Arrowhead. They take on the Washington football team today. They are scoreless with less than 10 and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. So Twin City Outlaws will receive, as I, as I had uh, predicted earlier, OG will kick it off. And since it's not high school football, they're going to kick uh, – it's going to be like half the field. <laughs> yeah, the, the same 10-yard uh, uh, kickoff rule applies. They will kick off from the 40-yard line. And we will – we are waiting for the referee to uh, give us the green light that we're set to go here. OG with the cameraman on the field. Yeah, that uh, that's a that's a new one. It yes. kind of reminds me of a uh, spring uh, high school game or no spring college game where uh, yeah. coaches and uh, cameramen are on the field with the players. Absolutely. So uh, we are set to go. They're 
looks like they're still doing a quick little countdown. Referees are going on their side of the field, slowly but surely, and we'll get the game underway shortly. Fantastic. All right, so here we go. We are set for kickoff. It looks like number four for the OG Ducks. That's Tatum Brown. Tatum Brown looking like he, he will kick it off for us here. It's kind of interesting with these jerseys uh, that the OG Ducks are wearing because uh, I mentioned, as you as you can see, it's, uh, they've got the uh, all yellow uh, pants, shirts, tops, and uh, helmets. But... Uh, White numbers. White numbers. So it'll be a little challenging to read these numbers. So we apologize in advance if we uh, get any numbers wrong. If we misidentify any of these players. But we are set for kickoff, and the ball is underway, and it lands at a, inside the 35 and then picked up at about the 25 yard line. And it gets back out to about the 30 yard line. Excellent coverage there by OG. Um, they stayed in their lanes and did an excellent job of getting the, uh, getting the player down. That was number seven, Gentrez Williams, on the return there. So Twin City will start the – they'll mark him at the 29-yard line. And that's where the Outlaws from Columbus, Georgia, will set up shop for their first offensive play of the afternoon. Yeah, as you can see, well, um, one of the keys, to, I guess, to the Outlaws game is that they're going to try to run the ball as best as they possibly can. So we'll see how they can do to do that against one of this uh, one of the top teams in the country. So they have a uh, two re two running back set, one receiver to the far left side. They put number one in motion, and it's an inside draw to number one. Excuse me. Gets out to about the 32-yard line, so a gain of three there, and it'll bring up seven and second and seven. All right, that was number three, one, oh, number one, Juan Mary on the carry. Gains around, we'll say, yeah, it looks like around four yards. So second and seven. Clock is running. Once again, a two, two running back set. They put the receiver in motion, and now Look looking to, to the – up at the reception, and that is number three, Lejavian Moore, who I, almost had it. And if he if he is able to corral, corral and it's a touchdown, but I, instead it's incomplete and it's third down and seven. I love the call here from the Outlaws. They ran an excellent play. You run um you run uh Moore on that uh you saw the play earlier. They ran. Uh, Moore was able to go ahead and just uh, they put Moore in motion, motion to the block play, didn't play action, just right off that play. Moore was wide open. Excellent wheel route. Good throw. Nice touch. He, Moore just was unable to come down with the catch. A little butterfingers there. Might have uh, had a little too much candy there <laughs> prior to the ball game. Getting a little excited. But uh, great play call nonetheless. Uh, incomplete. And we have a timeout on the field for a big third down. We uh, will our first stoppage of the game with 9.24 to go here in this first quarter. Uh, I love, I love again, I love the play call, but uh, the execution just was not there. But He was open. He was, he was open. wide open. So third down and seven at the 32-yard line. Now they line up in man coverage. And once again, a two-receiver set, number two. Donter Don Donterius Taylor goes in motion. He lines up on the left side. And once again, back to throw is number four, Elijah Long. And he runs for it. And then finally tackled inside the 50. OG Ducks on, on OG the, Ducks 45-yard line. Yeah, on the OG Ducks 45-yard line. So give him a gain of 23. On that third down and seven. That was an excellent. That's an excellent job there by um, by Long. He immediately felt pressure. Just did what his God-given abilities allowed him to do. He just ran out to the left side of the field. Just ran up down up down the field for for a nice long gain. The first down. Uh, it looks like we might have had a. Uh, 
penalty here. Nope. Just kidding. The uh, referees are uh, making sure they... Oh, it looks like there was a penalty after the play. Might have been a personal foul. So they're going to mark this ball at the 30-yard line. Oh, yes, 15-yard penalty. Yeah, it looks like it was, there was a personal foul probably at the end of the play as the uh, as uh, Long was running towards the sideline. Probably a late hit out of bounds. So, so they mark it at the 31-yard line. First down. Long back to pass. He's got his man. Nice move. Inside the 35, down to the 30-yard line. Now, this is something I was not anticipating here. Outlaws are trying to end, uh, are trying to go ahead and get the uh, the passing game going here. Moore has a pretty he's in he has nice little arm for eighth grader. He threw that out he threw that out route without a problem. You see some college players have issues with that throw. He had no problem with the throw. Not at all. So it looks like that is a gain of five, and we'll call it second down and five at the thirty one yard line. I formation, one receiver to the left side. Now make that two receivers as Michael Clendon goes. And here's a handoff to the left side, and that goes nowhere. Good job by OG Ducks. Just able to just penetrate the line of scrimmage and just get a tack, get a nice little tackle on there for, for a loss. Looks like they might have lost a yard on that play. And that looks like Kyene Green, number zero, was there to make the hit in the backfield. So a loss of two, and that makes it third and seven at the 33-yard line with seven minutes to go here in this first quarter. Second, third down situation here. Inside draw, and once again, the play gets blown in the backfield. I'm going to say that's number zero again. Nope, that is actually number six. Shakur Brackett coming in with the hit. Excuse me, that's number five. Kingston Blackman was there on the tackle. And that's a loss of four. So that that brings up fourth down and 11 at the 37-yard line. If I'm the outlaws, outlaws, I'm going to have to go back to a, a quick pass game because as of right now, we're seeing right now, they're unable to really run the ball because the, just the D-line from uh, the OG uh, OG Ducks are just doing an excellent job of just penetrating their O-line. Well, OG, well the, uh, the Ducks look like they're ready because they got a couple of safety, deep safeties there lined up at the 25-yard line. Two so here we, here we go, shotgun snap. And it's going to be a quarterback doing there. Looks look like the tackle there was made by. And that is Blackman again on the tackle. So a turnover on downs for the Outlaws. Nice job there by the Ducks getting the stop there. And they'll take over first down and 10 at their own 37-yard line. So a, couple, so a nice run there by... The yards after a personal foul, but unable to take advantage of good field position. So now we see the outlaws, or excuse me, the ducks on offense for the first time today. And we have a penalty prior to the snap. And it looks like it's an illegal substitution. So. That'll back it up five yards inside their own 35-yard line. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have – it's going to be an interesting uh, cat-mouse game between the OG Ducks D-line and the Outlaws O-line. As you can see, the, the outside our one play, uh, we've seen the, uh, the, uh, the Ducks D-line so far just absolutely dominate the Outlaws O-line. So we'll see if we can get that fixed later on in the game. So here we go, first and 15 at the 32-yard line, and it's a – and it's a sweep to the outside and nothing doing there. That's going to be a loss of two on that play. Try to see if we can get uh, figure out who was on the carry there for the Ducks. But either way, it's a loss of two. So, so not a good start for, uh, for the Ducks offensively. They get the penalty pre-snap prior to their first play. And now a loss of two. And now... Looking at second down and 17 from their own 30-yard line. I love how they're going old school with these uh, some of these formations here. Yeah, a lot of uh, split backs right here with the wing on the right side. 
couple Not extra tight ends there. And uh, they're actually going to throw it, and it's a long pass, and it's incomplete. They were looking for, I believe that is number six there. Shakur, Bra Shakur Brackett. Yep, Shakur Brackett, the intended receiver. No, excuse me, that is actually number one. That's Ryan Phillips. Ryan Phillips, the intended receiver, a little out of his reach. But a good play call nonetheless. Uh, like, kind of like uh, the Outlaws there on that second down, on their second play. Wide yeah. open receiver. Play action pass. Play action. Couldn't get him. If he hits him, it's a touchdown. Yes, sir. So now third down and 17 at the 30-yard line. And it's a toss to the left side and losing yardage there. And they're going to be, it's ball's going to be placed at the 29-yard line. Loss of one there on the play. So it brings up a fourth and a mile. Fourth and 18, we'll call it. As we approach three minutes to go here in this first quarter, we are scoreless here at Duluth High School. You're watching the Twin City Outlaws against the OG Ducks, a matchup of top five ranked teams in the United Tykes Network. So fourth down and 18. And we'll see what uh, what the Ducks have in store here on this play. I mean, I would think maybe a pooch punt, but they're going no, they're going to go for it. Oh. No, it is, a it is a punt. Does not get a lot. Oh, and it hits the outlaw there. Outlaws are saying that they recovered the ball. We'll check to see. We'll check and see. Yeah. Now you can't have, you cannot advance a, f a forward fumble, so it looks like they're going to mark it. That was, that was recovered by number two, Don Ch Dontarius Taylor, of the Outlaws. Yep. So they'll mark this at the 37-yard line, and it'll be first down for the Outlaws from there. So. That punt, that's about eight yards after all when all is said and done. So I've never seen that before, Noah. A uh, uh, hike on the center, drop back, and never seen that before. Yes, yeah, an interesting uh, interesting play call there, but they, they make it happen. So here, here we go on uh, first down. Uh, outside draw, handed off to number three. LeJavian Moore, but he has stood up in the backfield. It looks like he lost a couple there. Yeah, it looks like we lost three on that play. Yeah, so they'll mark this at, and it looks like it's a loss of two. So ball is uh, now spotted at the 39-yard line of the OG Ducks. So we'll call it second down and 12. Once again, they put Dontarius Taylor in motion. Three receivers set. And here's a run for Juan Merritt. Gets back some of the yardage that was lost there. Looks like he gets back to the original line of scrimmage yeah, at, the, yards. at the 37. So we'll call it third down and 10 with uh, 37 seconds to go here in this first quarter. Once again, Outlaws are out here trying to establish the, the run again, but the OG Ducks are not having it. They are not letting them have it at all. We were seeing two excellent defenses just stop the run as best as they possibly can. They're doing an excellent job of doing that so far. How about this? A three-receiver set this time for the Outlaws. Figure it's a pass play, and it sure is. But more to keep it, and he's going to run forward to about the 35. He needed the 27. So he's well short of the first down, but give him a positive play there, gain of two, and it brings up fourth down and eight. And that will actually bring us to the end of the first quarter here in Duluth. No score between the Twin City Outlaws of Columbus, Georgia, and the OG Ducks of Corona, California.
Duluth. And now we're back here at Duluth High School in Duluth, Georgia. Thank you for sticking around. We've had some technical difficulties, but we look like we've resolved them. And on this fourth down, Elijah Moore in trouble. And he is going to be taken down at the 43-yard line. Actually, we'll call that the 42-yard line. So lots of seven there. Once um, again, we're just we're just seeing the pressure from the OG Ducks. Just just their outlaws are have unable to have any time, any space or time to run the ball, throw the ball there. That OG uh, the OG Ducks are just pretty much just going on full blood blitzkrieg. So they lose seven yards on that fourth down. So the OG will take over first and 10 at their own 42 yard line. Good job there by the Ducks sniffing that out on that fourth down and eight. But see the Ducks try to do a little quick play action pass here. They haven't been able to, they're able to get a receiver open on the first pass play, so let's see. Split back formation and, then, and uh, the running back runs backwards for a second, but then is able to turn it upfield and out towards the Outlaws 45-yard line, so a gain of 13 on first down. Nice little and run there by number one, Ryan Phillips. It's crazy to see he just looped around the defenders, the defenders on the Outlaws. Kind of so reminded me a little bit of uh, Tyree Kill when he catches the ball in space. Absolutely. You know, kind of has the same build as uh, Tyree, mm -hmm. the all-pro receiver from the Kansas City Chiefs. So a gain of 13 there, first down and 10. Another split back formation, another handoff. And it looks like it's Phillips again, and this time is smacked in the backfield behind the line of scrimmage. That was number seven, Gentrez Williams on the hit. He just came through like a bat out of like a bat out of the cave and just absolutely clobbered the running back. Loss of one there, so we'll call it a second down and eleven at the forty six yard line. Actually, it looks like they gave him, they got him back to the line of scrimmage. So, no gain. Second down and ten at the 45. The Ducks really love this uh, split back formation here. This time it's an inside draw, and a little, little bit of room, but not really there. Inside the 45. That was number 20, Dominic Jackson on the carry. And it's an interesting play. Uh, I think it's like, we'll say like an interesting, we'll say it's a uh, wing T, the uh, counter, halfback counter. So even a fullback counter because he wasn't quite a, a halfback on that. He was a wing, if I'm correct. Yeah, wing, yeah. wing back, correct. So that's a gain of two. And it brings up third down and eight from the 43-yard line. And it's a play action. And a throw is made, caught and completed. Nope, next they're gonna mark, they're gonna say incomplete. Did not make did not hold on as he was coming down to the ground. So yeah, unfortunate there for Kai Young. He was open, made a nice catch in the ball, just couldn't unfortunately come down with the ball. One of the ground of the the force on the ground the just Knocked the ball off his hands, and then you had number three, Dontarius Taylor, on the coverage, and that clearly affected him as well. Possibly a little breeze here as we uh, see the American flag to our to the left of our broadcast position, starting to starting to waver a little bit. Good old old glory. Yep. So maybe the maybe a little breeze came in there, knocked the ball away a little bit. So fourth down and eight at the 43-yard line for the OG Ducks. This time it's a uh, lone back and running back, quarterback and running back run into each other. And now he's going to take off. He's got the first down and more, and he's still on his feet and finally pushed out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. So I, a gain of 18. I love the innovation here by the Ducks. I mean, you, you, <laughs> your blown play is just – it. Had a blown play there as the running back and the quarterback were not on the same page, but uh, he was able to make the most out of it and actually had a nice little run, able to uh, juke out some outlaws and get a nice little first down. So that gain of 18 is actually a gain of 19 as they mark the ball at the 24-yard line, and now a timeout taken by the Ducks. 
after that play. So we have 542 and counting to go here in this first half. No score between the OG Ducks. And now they're going to finally, they should stop the clock here. The referees are, officials are trying to get them to stop the clock, but their clocks are still moving. The clock is still moving, and the and uh, <laughs> not sure what's going on here. Yeah, he's not even paying. Somebody else is. I think somebody else is running, walk, rock, working, stopping it. There we go. We, we finally, finally, this clock finally stopped at five ten. They probably wasted a good 20, 30 seconds off that clock. So, a little confusion there. So, it looks like they're going to put about 40 seconds back on the clock. Yeah, there. I think they. I think I was hearing the fans say uh, 6.02. They went 6.02 yeah, back so on the clock. Yeah, so it looks like we'll have 6.02 <laughs> here on the clock. Uh, not sure what the uh, clock operator was doing there. Might have been on his phone. Might, it looked like he was on his cell phone there. Uh, we love our technology, but uh, sometimes it's okay to put it down. It's, it's, it necessary. it's, necess it's, ne it's definitely something you need to do. You, sometimes you need to just go back and... Yes, we need a break from technology every so often. All right, here we go. So first down and 10 at the 24-yard line after the 19-yard pickup on 4th and 8 for the OG Ducks. And now they will fall spotted, two running backs set. And it's an inside draw. Gets to about the 23-yard line. And that was a nice little run there by number two, Deuce Bennett. But I think he might have lost a yard to, or yard or two of, of four progress by doing the uh, spin move in the middle. It was like he would... He would have been just if he just just ducks his shoulder and runs forward. He maybe gets another yard or two instead of losing a yard on that a uh, couple yards off that spin move and running trying to dodge the uh, run the linebacker in a little hole. So actually no gain there. So it's uh, second down and ten, and here's a draw and this run goes to the right side, close to the twenty yard line. Nice gain there on second down. So. That'll bring up a third and manageable here from about the 20 yard line. I want to say that's number three on the carry. That was Riley Davis. Number five, excuse me. That was number five on the carry. Uh, Tayden Brown. Nice little stiff arm there to get out, get outside and gain some positive yards. So that's actually a gain of three on that play. So we'll it'll be third down and seven. At the 21-yard line, under five minutes to go here in this first half. Looks like, for the time being, the clock issues have been resolved. But, I mean, we'll see if uh, the consistency hangs out. So, here is a uh, rollout here to the right side. And quarterback maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Either way, not much doing there, and it'll be fourth down and seven from about the 21-yard line. That's a good job by the outlaws to defend that uh, that play-action pass there. And we see that's kind of one of the drawbacks of rolling out. You uh, It cuts the field off in half, and I think they were only running a two-receiver route, so both those receivers were covered up very well by the outlaws. So definitely limited his, uh, his ability to find open receiver and even space. So here we go, fourth down, seven from the 21-yard line. Ducks looking to take advantage of the short field. And once again, they have a two-receiver set. Looks like it's a shotgun formation. Ducks receivers getting in motion. Now they're set. And here's the lob pass to the left side and it's incomplete thrown into a very dangerous pass uh, off balance there but it falls incomplete and the outlaws will take over just outside their 21 yard line 21 pass. yard line pass was and once again having some problems here with the clock but it looks like they finally get it stopped here with 324 here in this first half quarterback threw that ball in the triple coverage <laughs> So it was a nice job by Jadavian Moore, uh, Le Le Jadavian Moore to knock that ball away and uh, force a turnover on downs. 
So first down and 10 for the Outlaws. This will be their third offensive series of the afternoon. And they'll set up shop at their own 21 yard line. Multiple running backs. Looks like they got three running backs there in the backfield. Full house. Full house. And here's the handoff and a short gain there as the running back runs into a couple of tacklers. Gets out to about the 25 yard line. It'll be second down and about six. Halfback power there by the Outlaws. I mean, if you're one of those teams that, that rely heavily on running the ball and ball control, that's what you want. That's four yards in the college. They, it's four yards right there on the first down carry, so that's going to make second down nice and manageable for them. And we've seen the Outlaws uh, on that first series. They when they uh, they had some uh, options uh, throwing the ball there. They were, they had a little bit of success. They had what they wanted uh, execution wise was a different story there. So second down and six. And Moore is back to pass and in some trouble and he gets swallowed up back around the original line of scrimmage. And he'll lose a couple there and I'll bring up third down and long. Now it was an interesting uh, change of pace there. They they actually got positive yards on first down. Nice little four yard run. Yep. And now they decide to uh, go back and throw the ball. I'm surprised they want to try to they didn't want to try to have another run play where you maybe get some extra yards. And like they might be changing up their game plan a little bit where they're going to start trying to, if they decide to run the ball, they're going to try to do a little um, maximize the amount of just players on, on the line of scrimmage. So here we go. Third down and eight from the 23-yard line. We're set. Moore hands it off to number seven, Gentrez Williams. And he gets it uh, just past the 25-yard line, but he's going to be about five yards short of that marker at the 31. So we'll call it fourth and five at the 26-yard line. All right, looks like they're about to try and punt the ball here, which is a wise decision with minute and 20, minute 30 and counting left in the first first half. Yep, uh, scoreless first half, first half so far here in Duluth. Uh, on a picture-perfect day here in Gwinnett County. Not a, not a cloud in the sky here, Dorian. Yes, sir, absolutely. This is definitely what fall weather is all about. So, and five, and uh, we're, trying to, we're trying to figure out what happened. Yeah, <laughs> I th I th it looked like they were uh, lined up for a punt, but... Also, like they're about to pass the ball as Maybe well. Maybe a possible pass, and looks like a penalty called against the. It's going to be called against the Ducks. Against the, the Ducks, forward. yeah. It's so it's going to make it fourth and one now for the Outlaws. Yep, and they'll, so they'll mark this at the 30 yard line. So now that I would think this changes the dynamic, and we have a timeout called by the Outlaws. They're gonna looks like they're gonna stop on by and just talk to talk this over because they have a good chance to maybe get the first down here one yard. That's very manageable. Yeah. And you have them, we've they, they're actually starting to get positive yards with these run plays with the uh, the heavy sets with the uh, two two tight ends and three running backs. So we'll we'll see what they can do here on for, on fourth down. So while we have a moment, a couple of updates uh, from the NFL. Uh, the Bears and Packers, we have a score with um, Buck 13 to go in the first quarter. Bears leading that one at Soldier Field 7-0 as Khalil Herbert has the rushing score for Chi-Town. In Detroit, Bengals leading the Lions 7-0. Joe Burrow has got a touchdown pass to Chris Evans for 24 yards. Colts leading the Texans 7-0 in Indianapolis. Paris Campbell has a 51-yard touchdown reception. And the Giants leading the Rams 3-0 at the end of the first quarter. Chiefs leading Washington 7-3 early in the second quarter in D.C. All right, here we go. Fourth down and another penalty. That's going to be offsides on the Outlaws. Look, like that's number seven on the outside, Jentrez Williams. Nope, actually they're going to call a false start. Yeah, excuse me, false start. False start on the Outlaws, so back it up five yards. So bring up fourth and six at the 25 yard line it looks like that's quite unfortunate because fourth and one that's very manageable and they were in prime opportunity to uh 
Get another first down. Keep the chains going with the round 102 left in the game. So now it's like they're going to go back to their previous plan and punt the ball off here. Yep. So uh, in that Washington-Kansas uh, City game, 7-3 Chiefs. Daryl Williams has the rushing touchdown for KC. Panthers leading the Vikings 7-6 to late in the first quarter. Chuba Hubbard filling in for the injured Christian McCaffrey, who's uh, going to be out for the next few weeks for the Panthers. He's got a rushing touchdown early on for Carolina. The Ravens leading the Chargers 7 nothing early in the second quarter. So the punt goes out to about the 45-yard line, and it is returned inside the 25-yard line. That is number 21, Karrion Davis on the return there, and that was a nice, good return. That's going to give the Ducks very good field position to uh, potentially score here with 40, 40 seconds left and counting in the game. Well, in the first half at least. First so, half. So uh, we have a clock stoppage with a – so we have about – looks like we're down to 33 seconds, but it looks like we're going to have some – they're going to put it back 54 seconds back on the clock. Yep, 54 seconds uh, on the clock here. So uh, some some clock issues here early on in this ball game, but uh, looks like we have those uh, sorted out. So seven nothing Ravens, by the way, against the Chargers in the first quarter. Lamar Jack, Latavius Murray, excuse me, the 14 yard rushing touchdown. That capped off a 12-play, 90-yard drive that lasted almost seven minutes. And another flag. It was like the Ducks have too many players on the field. Yep, an illegal substitution. So that will back it up to about the 30-yard line. Actually, it looks like they were marked at about the 24. So it's going to be first and 15 from the 29-yard line with 54 seconds. Plenty of time to... Should be plenty of time to put it in the end zone, but we'll see how if they're able to execute here as we come to the end of this first half. All right, if I was the Ducks, I think we might try to do a little bit of play-action pass here just so we can um, maybe get some chunk yards on the field and get. And if it falls incomplete, it's just you stop the clock. So let's see what they do. There we go. So it's actually a toss play. And able to turn it upfield. Gets a couple of the yards from the penalty back. Looks like he wasn't able to get out of bounds, though. So the clock is, uh, no, nope, they've actually stopped the clock. And that was number one, Ryan Phillips on the carry. So it looks like they mark it at about the... 26 yard line so a gain of three there and the timeout has been called by the OG Ducks yeah, that's so going to be their second of the half they should have one more left so they uh, so have 43 seconds to go with a second and 12 coming up from the 26 yard line for the Ducks some good defense on both sides and uh, while we have a minute one of the key players here for the OG Ducks uh, I haven't really talked about him much yet, but Tristan Moss Jr., his nickname is Tow Truck. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have uh, Elijah Long. He goes by the nickname. Oh, excuse me. I'm looking at the wrong roster here. No, you're correct. This does Elijah. Yeah. No. Okay, yeah, I'm looking at the wrong roster, too. Yeah, so <laughs> Kain, Kain Green, number zero, he, he is nicknamed Tow Truck. Tatum Brown, now here we go. He, They call him TB4. He's pretty simple nickname. So here we go, and it's a halfback pass, and it is oh. going to be intercepted at about the 10-yard line. That's number three, LeJavian Moore coming up with the pick. He has been all number three. Latavian Moore has been all over the field so far. He's had we saw on the last drive. He knocked down the pass, and right here he comes up with a big interception. I actually love the play call here by the OG Ducks. You don't have a lot of time left in the clock, and more likely the uh, Outlaws will be unable to score on a long touchdown. 
But it's just a great play and a great read there by by uh, Moore. You saw he was uh, – the tight end was open for a few moments. Moore just did an excellent job of closing in on the receiver and intercepting the ball, high-pointing it like you're supposed to. Right. Uh, it was – was a bit of that ball didn't have some air under it. It didn't hang up there for a few seconds, and when it does hang like that, uh, advantage defender because he has time to prepare, anticipate, and make the play. And uh, looks like the Outlaws are content with taking a knee and going into the half scoreless here, as the clock one winds down to about 20 seconds. And we'll call it second in about 11 at the 9-yard line. But it looks like we're going to – that will be the final play here of the first half at Duluth High School in Gwinnett County. No score between the OG Ducks and the Twin City Outlaws. Very, very exciting first half here. Good ball movement by both teams, but neither able to find the end zone. We've seen a lot of defense so far. A lot of defense. So far, after 20 minutes, our score at halftime on the United Tykes Network, 0-0 between the Outlaws and the Ducks.
And we're back at Duluth High School here on the United Tykes Network in Gwinnett County, Georgia. Scoreless uh, first half between the OG Ducks and the Twin City Outlaws. OG Ducks coming here from Corona, California, about 50 miles east of Los Angeles. The Twin City Outlaws from Columbus, Georgia, about an hour or so from here. Maybe two hours. Yeah, I would say two hours. Yeah, yeah, about two hours. An hour uh, west of the city, right on the Georgia-Bama line. So. Right, uh, right off of uh, I-85, western part of I-85. So about to start the third quarter. No score on a picture-perfect October Sunday in Gwinnett County. We were around kickoff. We were in the mid-60s with uh, limited humidity. And as I check the forecast now we're at 66 beautiful degrees not a cloud in the sky still a little bit of a breeze uh, from the west northwest at eight miles an hour and humidity dropping to, down to about 33 percent so sounds like excellent weather oh this is uh, perfect weather feels like i'm in philadelphia right now <laughs> visiting my grandparents like i was a kid either way we are set to go here for the third quarter the Outlaws, who had the ball to start the game, they are now kicking off from their own 40-yard line as the Ducks get into kickoff formation with uh, nine players on the five on the 50, and it's a squib kick, and it's covered at the 45-yard line. That is recovered by number four from the Ducks, uh, Riley Davis. Actually, a good job there recovering, uh, catching that kick. The most important thing, uh, 21. 20, excuse me. Carrion Davis coming up with the uh, recovery there at the 45 yard line. So, interesting uh, kick there by the Outlaws, maybe trying to catch the, the Ducks off guard, but to no avail. So, not a bad idea. Is a good way to. Uh, to st that's always a good way to start off the game. Well, start off the half. Do something unexpected. But it looks like it, the Ducks were expecting that. And Kerry and Davis did an excellent job of just catching that ball and falling on top of it. So here we go. First down and ten from the 45-yard line. Again, no score here between the Ducks and the Outlaws, and it's a twin back uh, formation. Quarterback hangs on, but he is tackled back near the 41-yard line as he spikes the ball in frustration after a loss of four. Yeah, it looks like they were. Uh, the, looks like him and the running back once again weren't on the same page again, and it just resulted in a uh, bad play and a loss of four on that play. So it's going to make it second down and long now for the Ducks. Actually, it looks like they. Uh, Marked his uh, forward progress at the 42-yard line. So loss of three there, and which brings up a second down and 13 early here in this third quarter. So second down and 13 from the 42-yard line. And it's a toss to the left side. Running back, changing direction, making a couple of defenders miss, but but it looks like he maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. And then we have a late flag come in as the tackle is made, and we'll check the marker. Looks like he had nothing going on the left side, that toss sweep, so he decided to just change direction. And he was able to juke around a couple of players, get a couple of yards, but Outlaws did a very, ex a very good job of Coming back and rallying around and tackling the running back. We have a personal call here on the outlaws here. Yeah, personal foul there. Looks like a uh, an unnecessary hit there. So they'll tack off 15 yards, and that puts the ball at the 42-yard line. So it looks like it's a 15-yard penalty, I, sh I should say. Or excuse me, 43-yard line. So 15-yard penalty brings up a fresh set of downs for the Ducks. And they have it first down and 10 on the plus side of the field. 
Before this first down, we have a timeout on the field for the Ducks. Looks like they had the uh, wrong personnel there, and we were able to get their uh, get the player off in time. But that's going to be a Ducks' first timeout of the second half. They have two more left in the half. So while we have a moment here in the action, uh, another update for you from the NFL. Packers have uh, gone back in the game. They've tied it up 7-7 under 10 minutes to go in the, in the second quarter. Aaron Rodgers uh, hitting Alan Lazard for a one-yard touchdown. Mason Crosby hitting the extra point. So we're tied at 7 at Soldier Field. 10-0 Colts now over the Texans. That game has about seven minutes to go in the first half. The uh, Rams, Los Angeles Rams, are on the board. In the Meadowlands, they lead the Giants 7-3 with 10-17 to go in the second quarter. 10-6 now our score in the nation's capital between the Chiefs and the Washington football team. The Vikings have taken the lead 12-7 with 10.47 to go in the first half. And now 14-0 Ravens over the Chargers with 10 minutes to go in the first half. All right, here we go. First down and 10, and it's a quarterback keeper. And running to the left side, trying to get a few extra yards there, but pro forward progress has stopped about the 40, and another flag comes in. At the end of the near the end of the play, we'll we we'll get a clock stoppage and we'll check the marker. Looks like that was uh once again if the quarterback I like the play call there, the bootleg to the left side. But if the quarterback keeps running the ball, he's able to he will probably get another five or six yards on that carry. He was he tried to stop him play <laughs> kind of in a way. Try to play uh, uh was constantly trying to stiff on the uh the defender, but if he keeps running and just maybe just sticks his arm out and Defensive tackle, he could, he'll, he'll get more yards on the play, but it'll work. It looks like it worked out for them. So they call a uh, face mask on that play as the tackle is being made. So tack on another 15 yards. So another first down by penalty at the expense of the Outlaws, and it sets up the OG Ducks at the Outlaws 26-yard line. So you know the Ducks not really doing much offensively, but Getting help from the undisciplined play of the Outlaws. 30 yards they've netted on two penalties there. And the inside draw on first down gets to about the 29-yard line. So we'll call it a gain of two there. That was an excellent job by Outlaw to just hit, when a, hit the uh, Ducks running back there. But the running back did an excellent job of just keeping his, keep moving his feet and uh, moving forward. If you're the outlaws there, you got you have to – nice little hit, but you have to grab high cloth. You have to wrap up and complete the tackle. So if, he, if, he, if he's able to do that, he might not be able to get any yards on that play. So it brings up second down and eight from the 29-yard line. See what kind of formation the Ducks have here. It doesn't look like they have any receivers. Looks like a heavy package with a couple of tight ends. And the split backs lined up at about the 29. And it's actually a play action. And ball is tipped inside the 15-yard line, and it falls incomplete. And that brings up third down and long. That was number third, number three again, Lejevian Lege, Moore on the cover. He's a ball hawk there on the back side there. He's, he's been doing an excellent job of containing the, uh, the Ducks passing game, so... Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see more from him later on once the Ducks keep trying to pass the ball. I was kind of, I, I should have uh, suspected that they might have tried to run a uh, play action there out of that formation, but it looked like they were committed to the run there. Here we go, third down and eight. This time it's a, it's a toss to the right side and a nice hole there. First down yardage and a lot more. And a cut into the inside, and it's a touchdown for the OG Ducks. That was an excellent run there by, uh, we'll say that's number, looks like that's number two on the carry, Ryan Phillips, as he.
one, and for the first time today, we have points on the board. So it looks like the, the Ducks will go for... Doesn't look like they're going to kick it here. Looks like it'll be a two-point conversion try as the ball is spotted at the three-yard line. And once again, he left, but nothing doing there. But he man he's fighting, gets back inside the five, but the point after the conversion try is no good. And so with 5.05, Ducks from Corona, California. Our score is six nothing. Yeah, you see those two 15 yard penalties costed the Outlaws big time, and were able to just help the uh, help catapult the uh, Ducks down the field even more. And with that toss sweep, um, they were just able to score. That 50. How about that of those? So that was a two-point conversion that they attempted. Actually, excuse we're... me, a one-point conversion that they converted that they tried to convert there on the on the running play, but to no avail. So my understanding is, as Devin is uh, Devin Johnson is pointing out in in this uh, eight and under league, after touchdowns, if you go for one, the ball is split, placed to run a pass or a run. If you go for two, it's a kicking play. So probably won't be seeing a lot of kicking opportunities after these touchdowns. Yeah, and, and these and, are eight-year-olds after all. And it does make sense, you know, um, especially with kids these age. Um, they're not exactly. I wouldn't. Uh, they're still developing. They're still growing as kids, and kicking is still something that takes a little while to to you know to do at a very efficient level. So it makes sense that they are. They are. They're. They, they, they do the scoring level that way. So the ball is picked up by the Outlaws at the inside the 30-yard line. A nice return there past midfield. Knocked out of bounds inside the 45 of the Ducks, but there is a flag on the play. That was number three, Lejevian Moore on the return there. The ball hawk, but... Uh, Looks like it's a, it's a holding call. And the flag is thrown at about the 42-yard line of the Outlaws there. So they'll mark it off about 10 yards. Didn't quite stay in bounds there. So so actually it uh, looks like some kind of personal foul penalty. So it's 15 yards from the end of the run, from the spot of the foul. So Outlaws are going to have it first down and 10 at their own 27 yard line so it's a good 20 plus yards uh difference differential between where they the ball will be spotted without the penalty and the ball spotted with the penalty so we'll see how that that's going to affect the outlaws on this upcoming try so here we go first down and 10 at the 27 452 to go here in this third quarter Ducks uh, coming off the touchdown drive that was 55 yards. 30 of those yards they they got were via penalty. One by a personal foul and another by a face mask that kept the drive alive. So so here we go. First down and ten. Split back formation and an inside draw. And not much doing there. May running back might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but not much after that. So it'll be second down and ten. Yeah, he was hounded by uh, when he first ran to the first defender. He decided to run back a little bit, and that's when the rest of the Ducks defender decided just went to corral on top of the uh, running back. And yeah, the, he did not get any yards in the play. It's gonna be second down and ten. So here we go, second down and 10 at the 27-yard line. So officially no gain on the play. 
receivers throw a couple guys in formation now. Yep, it's a two for receiver set. Empty One, set. An empty set. Now they line up split backs. Actually going to put number. That's Le LeJB and Moore. Moore in motion. They flip it out to him on the far side. Another flag comes in. He's got first down yardage out towards the 42-yard line. It's a gain of 15, but we'll check the marker. Might have been a holding call, considering how much room he had on that right side of the field. Nice little change of call there by the uh, by the Outlaws. They had plenty of window dressing on that play to try to confuse the Ducks, but it looks like it worked for a little while, but um, eventually uh, I'm not sure if it was in motion or not. No, it was a hold, so it's a... Uh, so they replay second down, so they'll actually lose two yards there. So we'll call it second down and 12 at the 25-yard line. So so wipe out the 15-yard uh, pickup there on that second down. Outlaws once again trying to pull up, use this Ducks defense, but and it's a double reverse on the inside handoff and a big hit there <laughs> at about the 29-yard line. That's number five from the Ducks. Kingston Blackman with the big hit on the play. Oh, man. It was, actually, that's uh, number two, Deuce Bennett. 22, Curtis, Curtis Cooper. Cooper. Sorry. With the big Once hit. again, we apologize for the uh, confusion there. Our, yeah, the white lettering on a yellow jersey is not exactly the best for reading numbers. So we apologize for any uh, numbers we uh, get wrong. <laughs> well, this isn't this. This wouldn't be the first time that uh, commentators have had this problem. Florida State uh, was nearly uh, fined by the NCAA for uh, their font on some of their jerseys in 2014 for uh, their gold numbers on white jerseys. So. Understand. We saw a nice catch there made out in the open field. Yeah, that's a, that's a personal foul there. On third down, but a late hit is going to probably knit the Outlaws a first down. As the receiver was already down by down uh, at about the 33-yard line. So we'll yep, and it's going to be a personal foul against the Ducks. So tack on another 15 and an automatic first down. This will bring the ball out to the 48-yard line, almost to midfield. That, that was number six, Michael McClendon, on a reception. If he's able to keep his feet, he more than he more than likely has no space to get the first down. But uh, a personal foul, that's, uh, that's another way to get it as well. So. so here we go, first and 10 at the 48-yard line. So it was a gain of four, but then tack on the fifth makes it a gain of 19 on the play as the Outlaws get a nice run there past midfield. Looks like it's a gain of four, so we'll call it second down and six. Yeah, it was number six, Michael McClendon on the on the, uh, the carry this time. And back-to-back uh, -back plays where he's got his hands on the ball, so we'll see who get some more touches. Approaching 90 seconds to go here in this third quarter. Again, our score, OG Ducks. Leading the Twin City Outlaws six nothing. Ducks uh, scoring on their first drive of the second half, aided by two penalties of 15 yards. Here's another handoff, and it looks like once again that is number five. It looks like that is number five on the on the tackle. Kingston Blackman. We've seen him all over the field today, haven't we? He's made several tackles by line of scrimmage at the line of scrimmage, and he's been a he's been a force for these Ducks players so far. That's a loss of three, and that actually puts the Outlaws back on their side of the 50 as we hit 45 seconds and counting to go here in this third quarter. It brings up a third down and nine at the 49-yard line. Twin receivers to the left side for the Outlaws, and it's a quick hitch pass and tackled immediately is number six for the Outlaws, Michael Clendon on the reception, but he's taken down at the 48-yard line, so that brings up a fourth down and six 
not for a bad, the outlaws. Not a bad call there to do the uh, the crossing route once again, but the Ducks did an excellent job in covering that play. And uh, McClendon was unfortunately five yards short of the first down. And so that will actually bring us to the end of the third quarter. Our score, the OG Ducks from Corona, California, leading the Twin City Outlaws from Columbus, Georgia, 6-0 in a matchup of top five teams in the eight and under division on the United Tykes Network. Yes, sir. So once again, we went to uh, the uh, Twin City uh, Outlaws are the number one team in the country, and the OG Ducks are the number four ranked team in the country. And so far, number four is uh, is prevailing over number one. We'll see if uh, the Outlaws can maybe get something going here in the final quarter. As we get ready for the fourth quarter, uh, some another update from uh, the NFL. The uh, Los Angeles Chargers trailing 17 nothing earlier in, in this first half. Looks like they're finally on the board as uh, Tyler Pipkins, or excuse me, Jared Cook catches a one-yard pass from Justin Herbert, the second-year st standout from, ironically, the Oregon Ducks. 17-6 <laughs> to six the score there as uh, Vizcaino misses the extra point. And on fourth down, the... The Ducks are, excuse me, the Outlaws are going to be swallowed up for a big loss. And the Ducks will take over on downs. First and 10 at the Outlaws' 45 yard lines. We'll call that a loss of seven on the play. Huge play by the Ducks there. And it's quite unfortunate because it looks like we might have had a, they had an interesting play call there where you had a running back go out in motion to the right side of the field. And pretty much the second the quarterback rolls from the Outlaws rolls to the right, he's immediately met by a host of uh, of ducks. So it's it's in order to get a half effective pass game, you must have time to throw the ball, and they have not had that much time all game. Yep, the gotta give credit to the uh, Ducks uh, defensive line being able to penetrate throughout this ball game and not give the uh, the Outlaws any. Uh, running lanes or time to have pass protection. So here's a hands, here's a uh, handoff to the left side, maybe to the line of scrimmage, but not much else after that. We'll call it second down. It was an interesting play call there. It was like that was going to be a draw play, but there was not much going there. The Outlaws did an excellent job of uh, pushing the O-line uh, back, pushing the uh, O-line back and able to get uh, – Get the running back, Mr. Kingston Blackman, down on the down on the ground. Brings up a second down and ten at the 45-yard line for the Ducks. As the Outlaws have a deep safety lined up at the 32-yard line, so they might be suspecting a play-action pass here with a uh, twin setback. And it is a toss to the right side, just past the 40 yard, 45 yard line. A very short gain, maybe one yard there. Either way, it brings up a third down and long. Yeah, not a bad play call there for the uh, the duck. You want to gain yards, but you also want to uh, you also want to make sure that you are making a safe. Out to the running back. That's number 21 that's down right now for the Ducks. That's Karrion Davis. Yep, he uh, helped off the field, although he is limping, and we hope he's okay. Walking mostly under. He's able to put a little bit of weight on, on his leg there, but uh, we'll have to – hopefully we can get an update. Yeah, he is really struggling as he comes off the field there, so – yeah, he's looking he's like he's walking a little bit better the, the closer he gets to the sideline, so hopefully we'll be able to see him back in the game. You just kind of hate those injuries. You know, they'll, you'll, your ankle or something like that will hurt for like a good couple minutes around, rub some dirt on it, come right back into the game. And we'll see if, we, if, see if, we'll be able, if he'll be able to do that. So here we go, third down and nine from the 44-yard line for the Ducks, looking to extend their lead 
after scoring on the, your only drive of the third quarter. Here's a rollout and a little uh, lame duck pass, no pun intended. Falls incomplete inside the 40 yard, 45 yard line. And that'll bring up fourth down at the 44. Yeah, there was not much time for the quarterback there as the Outlaws did a pretty excellent job of timing that uh, time that snap up and able to get some pressure on him. And he's very lucky that he threw that between three Outlaw defenders. So he's very lucky that one of them did not catch that ball and return it for six. That certainly would have been a picks, uh, house call if the Outlaws were able to get their hands on it. Before there were not any Duck players past that uh, that far hash mark, and they would it would have easily would have been a touchdown. So here we go, fourth down and nine from the 44. We're early in the fourth quarter, 7.51 to go. And that thing we got to talk about on that play. So if the clock running, especially with the six-point lead and the Outlaws unable to move the ball, that stops the clock. Yeah, it, it gives uh, had some time there for the, uh, for the Outlaws. And here's an interesting inside draw that goes nowhere. It looks like that was a counter play there, and unfortunately the, the handoff was way too deep. You normally see these counters. They're much closer to the line of scrimmage, and that just ena ena enabled the uh, Outlaws to just run further up the field and um, able to get their hands on the uh, running back. Once again, we're having some uh, clock issues here. They finally stopped the clock with 7.26. Probably need to add some time back on, to, back on the clock there, probably about 15, 20 seconds. Yeah, I'm sure the outlaws are screaming, "Hey, give us as much time as you possibly can!" Right, give us as much time <laughs> as you possibly can. Exactly. Time is not time is not their friend. Seven twenty six left for f you're in the f you're in the final quarter of the game. You still haven't scored. You're only down by six points. You're just asking, just give us a little more time. So they do add fourteen. So we have seven forty to go, and now they will wind the clock. And here's the shotgun snap. Nope, it's a fake handoff. As the it's a quarterback keeper. As Elijah Long gets out to about midfield, so we'll give him six on that uh, run there on first down, which brings up second long. And we have another stoppage to play, another injury timeout. As another OG Ducks player, oh man, he is flat on his back. This is not good. Yeah, they're checking out his left leg, and he is, and he is not moving at all. Uh, yeah, he might be knocked out. Oh, boy. Yeah, he's knocked out. Oh, my goodness. Anyways, back on that previous play. It looks like that was a... Uh, I'm not sure if that was a... Uh, it was a draw, but I'm not sure if it was an uh, attended fake handoff or not. But, um... But, yeah, anyways, you get, you long did a good job of moving the ball and getting some positive yards on that carry. Coaching staff and uh, medical experts uh, tending to the injured player. I'm trying to see if we can get the number on I, this player. I want to say that was number 21, Karrion Davis. Oh, well, he just, we just saw him limped off the field, correct? Yeah, that's uh, it's not Davis. Let's see who this is. As the player number four, that is number four, Taden Brown. So that's a good sign. He's able to get up and walk off on his own under his own power. But that's a little scary moment there. <laughs> He's walking off without a problem, so um, hopefully he's okay. Yep, well, he, that's always a good sign. I mean, it, I, I feel like uh, sometimes, you know, football is, as we know, is a can be a, always drama, especially in close games like this. And, you know, these players sometimes, uh, they do have a flair for the theatrics, but especially when it's an injury, it's a serious play. And here's a nice run there by... I believe is that number six? Yes, that's number six, Michael McClendon on the carry. Michael McClendon once again. A nice carry there. That brings that'll move the chains for a first down. It looks like it was a halfback. Uh we saw something a little different there. Um Outlaws with a uh, a handoff in the shotgun, and we've seen they've had a little bit of success when the running back requirements from the center. But did on this play, uh they decided to do a, a shotgun run there and it worked out just fine for them, perfectly just fine. So a gain of nine there on the uh, second down and medium for the 
for the Outlaws and a late switch there by the Ducks defensively, but they get off in time to avoid the illegal substitution penalty. And here's, I believe that's uh, number three for the Outlaws, LeJavian Moore on the carry, but he is uh, dropped for a loss there. Looks like he lost about three or four on that play. And so that'll bring up a second down and 13. Yeah, if Moore cuts right up the field the second he runs into his own uh, his own offensive player, he probably gains a yard or at least doesn't lose any yards in a play. But him trying to run outside and extend the play out just enabled the OG Ducks uh, defense, defense to just run after him and, and chase him down. And unfortunately, they lost their yards on the play. I, I I understand that these are young kids, and I'm these sure these kids can run too. <laughs> these, yeah, they can <laughs> we, run. They we've can been run. seeing that all game. The, the, these kids are they're not facing off. Uh, everybody seems like everybody on the field is is, is fast and can run. So it's going to be very difficult for kids to outrun each other. Short hand, a short gain there on uh, second down to get back to about the original line of scrimmage, but uh, past the original line of scrimmage, which will bring up third down long. But my point, the point I was going to make was. I, well, I, I do understand that these are young kids, and I think these coaches understand that too, but I'm sure one of the things they're going to teach these kids as they get older and as they move forward in this game is, in football, lateral movement's good, but it's all about north and south progress. Absolutely, yes, they will learn so, that. Yep, you gotta got to move it. you got to be able to run downfield, pick up positive yardage, and don't uh, run yourself out of a first down football, out of positive games. Football is a game of inches. That is every correct. Every single inch you possibly can. It all matters. So here we go, third down and long. Long in trouble, manages to escape. A flag comes in as he keeps it and runs inside the 40 to the 39-yard line, but we will check the marker. My guess is it's probably going to be a hold against the Outlaws, and that'll back them up third and a mile. But I would think if I'm the OG Ducks, if it's against them, you probably want to decline the penalty. But it is a hole, and they will accept the penalty. So mark off 10 yards, and that brings them back to the 45, their own 45-yard line. So we now have a third and... 19. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, third and... No, oh, excuse me. That'll be a third and 24. Excuse me, from the... Yeah, we have a timeout here for 40 Outlaws. Um, that's going to be their first to half. Yep, that'll be a... Uh, that'll be a third and 24 for the... Outlaws at the 45, and we have a timeout on the field with 4.14 to go. So a very important third down play. We'll see what head coach Timothy London has in store for his ball club as they try to pull some magic here late in the fourth quarter. The question is what you could do with the Outlaws. Um, what what has been successful? It looks like they've been able to be able to – um, they're obviously going to have to probably put the ball in the air just because of the uh, just because the limp, just cause, you know, it's third and twenty-four, and it's definitely going to be two down. This is two downs. They're going to take two downs to get this first down here. So what I think they need to probably try to do is maybe do like uh, they're going to have to pass the ball, but I I would like to see another crossing route once again. I think uh, they'll be able to get some. Uh, it's it's, it's going to be a, it's and they're going to have to get the ball out quick as well, considering how well um, how how the Ducks have just done an excellent job of just keeping um, their quarterback, Elijah Long, uh, pretty much under duress the whole game. So it's going to be pass the ball here like they are right now. Mean a shotgun, you got to get rid of it and get rid of it very quick. Yep, three receivers set here. Here's a shotgun snap, and Long is looking deep, and it looks like it is. Nope, it looked like it was intercepted from our uh, vantage point, but the official there on the far side, he had a better look at it and it's incomplete should have been an interception though and that brings up fourth down and a mile from the 45 yard line so i i like the call there um third and forever they did an excellent job of snapping the ball and he gets the ball out of his hands quick just gotta give um long just has to get a better throw there um 
he's a, yeah. Um, once he, and um, probably should have thrown something. Uh, once again, my probably like something short routes, like a curl or or a drag route, something along those lines. But anyways, now back off. So here we go, fourth and long, and the ball is tipped near the 40-yard line, and it's incomplete. And so with 4:01 to go, the OG Ducks will take over at the on the plus side of the field. And once again, Timothy London's Outlaws come up empty offensively. Yeah, once again, um, pretty much same thing as the last play. Uh, they they tried to uh, run one receiver and throw the ball deep, but uh, Ducks were on top of it. Ducks an excellent job of uh, just knocking that ball away and making sure that the uh, Outlaws are not receiving, catching the ball and making a first down there. So it's not going to be first and down in 10 for the Ducks. What do you have to do? Just run the clock out. So here we go, first and 10 at the 45-yard line. It's a, it's a draw. Was there a fumble? It looks like it was fumbled. And what do you know? Wow. <laughs> the Outlaws looking like they were on death's doorstep there. They get a huge stop and a big takeaway, and they get the ball right back. With 3.53 left. With 3.53 to go here in this ball game, 46 yards. Excuse me, 54 yards separating the Outlaws from a possible victory here this afternoon. We do have a timeout on the field prior to this next change of possession, which out. gives me an opportunity to update you guys on some scores around the NFL. Uh, the Looks like the Rams from Los Angeles are starting to pull away here early. In the Meadowlands, they lead 21-3 to inside the two-minute warning at the Meadowlands. Matthew Stafford has two touchdown passes today, one of them to Cooper Cup. Daryl Henderson has the other score for L.A., who comes in today 4-1 and after a big win last the previous Thursday night in Seattle against the Seahawks. Washington football team has taken the lead against the Chiefs with about 38 <laughs> seconds to go in the first half. Oh, who, who saw that coming? <laughs> Certainly not me. Uh, Ricky Seals-Jones has a 39-yard touchdown catch from Tyler Heineke to make up the difference in that game. Dustin Hopkins has two field goals, one from 43 yards, the other from 50 yards. Daryl Williams the, has the lone touchdown for the Chiefs today in that ball game. All right, here we go back to the game at hand here in Duluth. First down and 10, and it's a long throw, and a nice catch <laughs> oh is made <laughs> at the 30, the 20, the 10, the 5. Make a house call. Touchdown, Outlaws. Wow, amazing. An excellent play call there. That pass was caught by number 3, LeJavian Moore. He's been a ball hawk not only uh, defensively but offensively as well. Excellent play call there. I love the fact that they put him in motion. They put him in motion from right to left. One's a real route. And the quarterback, Elijah Long, just puts it right on him. And, uh, and Moore is able to work his magic and outrun the defenders long enough to score a touchdown. So just like that with 341 and all of 12 seconds, the Outlaws tied the game. And they're going to go for one here to try to take, the, take a one-point lead. The Ducks, as you may recall, went for one on after their touchdown to no avail. And it looks like, yes, quarterback, quarterback keeper and the Outlaws, just like that, they have the lead 7-6 to six with 3.41 to go here in this ballgame. Turnover and the touchdown. How, 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 how huge was that, that turnover? Uh, 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 unbelievably huge. I mean... You know, the Ducks, they, they had the ball in good field position. You figure maybe they run the – get a couple of good runs. This ball game. Chew up but... some clock, and they win this game. Instead, they put it on the ground, and it gives the Outlaws, uh, you know, a second chance at life, and they do not waste the opportunity. And they, as they 
put in the end zone on one play. Yeah, 50, 54 yards on that touchdown. We've seen all game the Outlaws have struggled to to they've struggled to block the, the Ducks D line. They've struggled to run the ball. They've struggled to pass the ball. And lo and behold, all it takes is one play, one play, a nice long, long reception by uh, Lejavian Le Moore on that wheel route and put gives them six points on the board. And now they have to lead. So now we shall see how o the OG Ducks respond here. Who are led by head coach Chris Thomas. Again, the Ducks and the the Ducks are number one in the country, if I'm not mistaken. It's the Outlaws. Ducks the, are number four. So. The, the, the Ducks are number four. The Outlaws are number one. This so. would have been a good chance for them to become number one after beating the number one team. but Well, we shall see. They, they still have an opportunity to win. And the, another squib kick here on the kickoff. Looks like the Ducks have it recovered at their own 46-yard line. That's number zero. K and Green on the recovery, and uh, the Ducks were very lucky to recover that ball. As you saw, it, it kind of, the ball kind of bounced around in between a couple of players, and the Outlaws just weren't able to get there in time to recover the ball. But it's first and ten now. Let's see what the Ducks are going to be able to do here. They have good field position. They are right around the 50-yard line, so we'll see what happens. 46-yard line, which is exactly their own 46, which is where the Outlaws were just a moment ago when they uh, – Hit that 54-yard touchdown pass, so it's doable. Yeah, let's see if the Ducks can create any magic here. As fans are getting, uh, they're getting into it. We can hear the vibrations uh, up here in our press box. And here's a toss play, and maybe got back to the line of the scrimmage, but nothing doing there. Brings up second down as we roll under. Roll towards three minutes to go here in this fourth quarter. Once again, the Outlaws, having been shut out all afternoon, get a 54-yard touchdown pass on their previous possession to take a 7-6 to six lead here, here at Duluth. Yeah, we'll see if um, we we'll see the Outlaws. We're probably going to see a heavy dose of the run here from the Ducks, but we're going to see if the Outlaws. I'm going to start to maybe press their uh, DBs and linebackers back a little bit more to play against uh, to defend against a long pass. Important here. They only have one timeout left. Here's a pass play. And oh, <laughs> intercepted. They're going to call pass interference there. It looks like number Absolutely. six. Number six, Michael McClendon hit the receiver just a little too early. And once again, number three. Javian Moore almost with the interception there, but um, that's I think that's going to give him some yards there. Yep, so they it's do. going to get the Ducks some yards. So they call the pass interference, and so it'll set up the it'll set up the Ducks in good field position inside the 40-yard line down to the 39, so it's a 15-yard penalty. Would have been third down if not for the infraction, but once again, third time today they've gotten they've benefited on a key drive from a uh, from an error by the Outlaws. And let's see if they can take advantage of it. So here we go, first and ten, and inside draw, and nothing doing there. They're going to lose a few yards back on the. Plus side of the 40-yard line. <laughs> so a little, <laughs> little <laughs> celebration dance there by the. Uh, That's number 44, Bryce Pratchick, with the uh, interesting T-Rex celebration there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, excellent. Ex excellent job by him to, uh, to keep the uh, to keep them from running the ball. And once again, that the clock's still running. Time is not on the duck side, and the clock is still running here. Yep, we approach uh, two minutes to go here in this ball game and uh, looks like we're going to get a stoppage. I think uh, we're going to get a timeout. From the Ducks. Timeouts from the Ducks. Yep, and this will be their third and final timeout with 1.59 to go here in this fourth quarter. 7-6. to six, The Outlaws leading the Ducks here in Gwinnett County at Duluth High School. While we have a minute, uh, an update on the score. The uh, Rams are now in full, are pouring it on now against the Giants. 28-3 to now the score. 
with under 20 seconds to go in the first half. Matthew Stafford now has three touchdown passes. The last one, 25-yard strike to Daryl Henderson, who now has two touchdowns on the day, one running and one receiving. Good job by those guys, who I, both of whom I have in one of my fantasy leagues. Oh, so. I bet you're getting tons of points with Matthew Stafford. Oh, yeah. Well, Matt Stafford's got 20 points for me. I mean, I've been uh, – side note, uh, not, <laughs> not that any of you are interested. This only serves me, but uh, – my big league, I'm not doing well fantasy-wise, but they're definitely doing work for me today. So this is, definitely helps. Here's a toss of the right side. Nothing doing there. They're actually going to lose about six yards on that play. Excellent tackle there by number one, Juan Merritt. I, I'm not sure if he's seeing what I'm seeing, but every time we're seeing these running backs drop back a little bit further back in the backfield, we're seeing toss sweep from them. So I wonder if that's the key he read. And if so, excellent job by him. That's a huge loss there for the uh, the Ducks as they are out of timeouts. And it is one is inside 130 left in the final quarter. Yep, and uh, so now they're at their own 49-yard line. So here we go, third down and 22. They need a big play, and now the ball is on the ground, fumble, and they lose even more yardage. And now they're at the 40-yard line. So, man, what do you do here? Fourth down. This is going to be fourth and 31 wow. at the 40-yard line, and we are under a minute to go. Looks like that was going to be a toss-sweep pass there for the Ducks, but... And it's a one year, one one receiver route, so it looks like and it looks like the Outlaws did a pretty good job of uh, having a receiver covered up. So we're not sure how much yards he would have, how much yards he would have gotten after if, if they were he was even able to uh, get the pass off and catch the ball. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see what they have next. Looks like the uh, Ducks need to definitely open up their uh, their. There we go. Fourth down. Flag on the play is the. So now uh, incomplete pass, so it's going to be an illegal shift, but it looks like. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to matter, Yeah, it looks like it won't matter much. Uh, it looks like the penalty was against. It's going to be on the Ducks. It's fourth down. Yeah, so. Decline in penalty. First down and 10 for the Outlaws. Yep, so now it's 7 to 6. And so the Outlaws defense holds. They overcome the penalty the uh, pass interference call on that second down. So the Ducks end up losing six yards <laughs> after all of that in spite of the uh, getting the uh, pass interference call in their favor. Yeah, you saw that they had excellent football field position to start off the drive, and unfortunately they shot themselves a the foot, and the Ducks helped them, push them even further back. I mean, the Outlaws did an excellent job of doing it good job and pushing further, even further back so it should be a knee here yep victory formation and that should do it 26 in seconds and counting left on the clock yep looks like they're they're gonna run the clock out here so our final score in the first half of our united tykes Net, tykes network double header the twin city outlaws from columbus georgia Come from behind in the fourth quarter and defeat the OG Ducks from Corona, California. Our final score, 7-6. to six. Very good game defensively by both teams as the Outlaws sideline, the parents and family and friends. Very excited as they rightfully should. A great game by both teams. And the Outlaws are going to be able to keep their number one spot. Uh, they should. Very close game. Good job by both teams here. As we will get set for our second game of our doubleheader. And, uh, Dorian, I think you have some uh, info for us on that second game. Oh, yes. Yeah, so second game is going to be we're going to have the Bartow. It's going to be the Bartow. Uh, the Bartow. I cannot speak. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Bartow County Panthers, who are going to be in white jerseys, white helmets, and uh, we'll say Carolina blue pants, and the Hapeville Hornets, who are in green helmets and orange jerseys and pants. And socks. 
Yes, I do. See, <laughs> I see a mixture. I see mostly orange. I see one per one couple players with pink and a couple players with green. So mostly, oh yeah, mostly uh, orange socks. There yep. it looks like. Yep, mostly. <laughs> so good game there. Good first game here between the uh, between the Ducks and the Outlaws, and we've still got more games to come. So we'll. That game will kick off here in a few minutes. Yeah, it looks like we have two minutes until our next game here. Well, we'll keep it here in the meantime. Just say this, all right. I went to UCF. I get, I'm a UCF alumnus, all right. We got uh -huh. we got shellacked yesterday by uh, Cincinnati. They're really fucking good. All right. So um, here's our rosters. Cool. Yeah, it should be good. 